The year is 1911. Europe is at war. The British Army has moved into France to help the French Army fight against the German Army. The British Army itself is a very organized and neat force. All companies work together to assault the enemy forces and dislodge them from their positions. All the British soldiers are disciplined and do things by the book. All but one soldier, that is, a Sergeant Reginald L. Fairfax. He is a muscular, tall, and loud soldier. He keeps his hair completely shaved, except his elegant handlebar mustache. He is usually found wearing his favorite outfit, the standard British Army fatigues, which he wears with pride. <clears throat> he also includes his own monocle, of course. He comes from a long line of soldiers who are all very respectable men. Reginald's only weak weakness is his thundering and assertive voice. He was so loud that German snipers heard him and were able to shoot him nine times before he finally shut up and found cover. German artillery fire rained down on the French countryside for hours now. A company, led by Gerald McKnight, was patrolling through a hilly terrain. Their patrol was almost over when all of a sudden, Private Alfred T. Winterbottom fell over. He was shot by an 8mm round fired from a Model 98 sniper rifle fired from less than 100 meters away from it, atop a windmill. Sniper, take cover! Someone cried. Private Alfred T. Winterbottom was the first of thousands to fall on July 6, 1911. Less than 10 seconds later, German zeppelins rose from behind hills and infantry rose from hidden positions. The machine gun fire came from all directions and A Company was slaughtered. Most of the men were dead before, before they could react. <clears throat> Lieutenant Gerald McKnight tried to rally his troops in order to retreat, but it was too late. At the British camp, Attention, attention! This is General Price. All soldiers report to the front lines immediately. Sirens began, began to go off throughout the camp as soldiers got their gear on and began the short march to the nearby trenches. Now British artillery fire began shelling the German trenches to soften them up for an infantry charge. The heavy cannons are firing HE, or high explosive shells, that leave large craters after impact. Hundreds of British soldiers begin to move in by droves to their designated trenches. Av Company, led by Sergeant Reginald himself, was in the northeastern sector of the British front line. The British counteroffensive was an absolute tactical failure. Entire companies were getting pinned down or too afraid of getting shot to do much. Reginald ordered more artillery on Windmill Hill and also phoned for poison gas strikes. Put on your gas masks, boys! It's about to get hairy! cried Reginald. An excited reply came from his men. Yes, sir! The poison gas rained down on the German positions along with more HE artillery. Reginald gave one of the most famous orders in history. Fix bayonets! Over the top, lads! British infantrymen rose from their trenches and ran up the hill where carnage and death awaited them. German Maxim machine guns spitted round after round at the advancing soldiers, but were forced to retreat as the fearless Brits leaped into their trenches. Reginald himself killed over 12 Germans in the five minutes it took to ascend the top of the hill. Other British officers followed Reginald's lead and began their charge up Windmill Hill. However, German machine guns mowed the seemingly endless force of soldiers down. Reginald didn't want their sacrifice to go to waste. Reginald rushed through the trenches, thrusting his bayonet through the hearts of countless German infantrymen. He finally burst through the rickety wooden door of the sod machine gun nest, where Commander Hans Ubel of the German Fallschmager 69th GJR Regiment awaited him with a 1887, or Model 1887 shotgun, which ripped a large chunk of hamburger out of Reginald's stomach. However, the sergeant wasn't dead yet. Reginald stabbed him in the throat with his bayonet and threw him to the side. Reginald, carrying his innards, then grabbed a flag and planted it on the top of the windmill on Windmill Hill. Reginald screamed, The hill's ours, lads! A large cheer came from the crowd of British soldiers who threw their helmets into the air and hugged one another. Many men died that day, some in vain, others for freedom. Reginald went to the hospital later that day. He survived his wounds and finished out the rest of the war, rising to the rank of lieutenant colonel. Reginald was there to watch the signing of the Treaty of Versailles and was awarded the Victoria Cross, which is the British equivalent to the Medal of Honor, in 1952. He would never forget the day of July 6, 1911. Many he had become friends with died that day along with other true heroes. Reginald was later knighted by Queen Elizabeth for his heroism and bravery on 1961.
He is now known as Sir Sir Reginald L. Fairfax. He passed away in his small home in Dark Forest, Scotland, July 6, 1999, at the age of 109.